Morning. It's uh, Saturday, July 27th, and finally my truck is moving. I'm still in Fort McMurray. I did a reset. You know, now I have all my hours back. Back, uh, so uh, 36 hours shutdown for 36 hours. And uh, I booked a load, but the closest good load was uh, for Monday. And if you remember, if you saw my previous video, I came here on when was it? I I am I unloaded on Thursday, I think. Yeah, Thursday morning, right? And then I was trying to find something, and everything was so cheap. It's either like drive four hours into Saskatchewan to haul some cheap hay. Uh, so as I I called eight I called the agents uh, that work in this area. And uh, one of them found me a load from Calgary going to a uh, suburb of uh, Portland, Oregon, but on the Washington side. And it's some kind of, uh, as she said, a reels. I said, what? She says, well, it's uh, reels with metal and they were going to load them uh, flat on your floor. Okay, so I called the agent because it's kind of like, you know, I, I'm collecting this uh, because each time... 99.999 percent of the time agents are wrong about the type of freight that you're picking up so so you know if I was a freight broker I don't know I would maybe make a extra call you know just go an extra mile just so that I know what I'm sending the truck to pick up because you know basically you're selling when I'm calling the agent right uh, the guy is uh, he's paying me so he's basically buying my services right so I need to know what it is because I need to, you know, get in the mood, you know, start thinking how to secure this stuff. Maybe I need to buy some extra damage or something, right? But uh, agents never know because for them this is uh, this is not uh, what they sell. Basically, they buy a truck, right? They secure services of a trucker, and of course, most of the time they don't even know uh, anything about axles, you know, and weights and stuff like that. What kind of trailer you need? So, but anyway. So I called a customer in Calgary and I say, hey, I'm picking up reels. And the guy said, what? I said, well, that's what the agent said. I'm picking up some reels, kind of like what they use with cable. And the guy says, actually, wait a second. Uh, let me look it up. And he says, no, you're not picking up reels. You're picking up uh, coils. So reels, coils. All right, it's still metal probably, right? And I said, so what's, what is it about uh, reels? What started the agent, you know, this kind of thought, this line of thought? And she said, and the guy said, uh, well, they are uh, coils, but one of those, you know, rare types, actually, one, once a guy asked me, like, do you ever have coils on uh, skids? And this is what I'm going to be hauling. Like, this is one of those uh, rare times when a coil sits on a skid, probably secured with some uh, metal bands, you know. So it's going to be an easy load, and I don't need I don't need any dunnage or anything. So they'll just put it on the floor because it's wood, right? Um, but that's in Calgary, from Calgary, Alberta to Fort McMurray, Alberta, where I'm now. It's about six hours. Uh, uh, it's six hour drive, you know. So and this freight broker I know from Calgary, and his name uh, rhymes with Bob. He says uh, better stay there, you know, like Thursday, Friday. Sometimes there's a uh, there's a load going down like maybe they have some machinery broke down here in you know in these oil fields so they have to ship something uh, you know at least to Edmonton because I didn't want to go empty for six hours so I waited waited and then uh, the same agent who gave me this uh, load of reels coils called and said hey I got I don't have a load to Calgary but I have something uh, going to Edmonton right from Fort McMurray and I said hey great you know and as she says well it doesn't pay too much probably like five six hundred bucks uh, to the truck and uh, but at least it'll give you some money for fuel you know I don't have to you don't have to go uh, you know empty and uh, spend your own cash I said wait a second what do you mean to the truck that's another thing that I find uh, a lot of brokers and agents uh, are confused about like to me I look at the load on our loads on our Landstar board and it says it, there's a revenue there, right? Because that's actually a big difference between a uh, typical uh, load board, you know, like uh, Transcore, you know, 360, DAT, uh, all, all owned by the same company and um, let's say um, 
you know, truckstop.com or getloaded.com, they very rarely put the price, like what the load pays. You have to call in each guy and uh, either ask, you know, what it is or, and, you know, what, what happens when probably half of the time the, the load is too cheap, like I wouldn't even bother calling them, right? But at least with Landstar I see the price, but that's gross revenue. I only get percentage of that, so my percentage is what truck drivers understand as to the truck. So let's say if the load pays a thousand dollars gross revenue, then to me to the truck means that means that what I get uh, let's say if it pays thousand bucks I will get seven hundred dollars or seventy five hundred seven hundred fifty bucks right out of that I pay for fuel expenses stuff like that that's to the truck but she says five five hundred six hundred dollars to the truck and I thought wait a second okay that's that sounds pretty good and then I start uh, asking her what she means and it turns out she means not to the truck but she means gross revenue so it's like six hundred bucks gross revenue so it's like you know basically no money but I said okay but <laughs> to make things worse that load pays by by the ton and that's never a good thing that means that they're gonna load me like up to the gills right what's the expression uh, up to the up to my neck and then okay she booked it some kind of metal right and then she sends me the load confirmation and I see wait a second I'm picking up this stuff at a you know basically a recycling place and there's a phone number there so I call the guy and yeah it's scrap metal it was too late to say no because it was already on my truck and I didn't want to you know uh, because once you start canceling loads you, I can do that but then you know it, it pisses agents off you know and uh, once I did this and the guy says don't call this agency again you know so you don't want to do that because that's your you know that's your customer right the agent the broker is my customer because he pays me money well not he but he Lansta but he gives me the he or she gives me the load so you know you don't want to get them uh, angrier than 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 you need than you have to so I took this load took cash advance as usual so now at least I have money for fuel I don't want to spend my own money and uh, then I call the guy and I say, so how do you guys load this? Like, what kind of, uh, you know, scrap metal is this? And he says, well, it's all compressed, you know, kind of like, you see those cars in movies, you know, like where mafia kills their, uh, you know, enemies and they put them in a car and then <clears throat> press, you know, kind of exciting. But it's not cars, actually. It's, he says it's more like uh, soft metal, like uh, fridges, you know, stuff like that. And I said, so how do you load it usually? Do I have to bring any timbers? And the guy says, no, 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 it's all very soft. We, uh, I've been loading this for, he says, like four or five years, and we always put them on the deck. I said, really? Okay, well, what about if I have aluminum floor? And the guy says, well, I'm loading a trailer with aluminum floor right now, and we're just pushing, putting it on the deck. And I then, you know, I don't want to be, like, you know, anal about this, but after what happened with my rub rail, right, <laughs> I'm now more careful. I don't want to make shippers life difficult but you know this is my equipment right they don't care about the equipment they just want to load me and you know see me go right so that's their job my job is to cons preserve the equipment and be a safe operator right so you know secure the load and actually it's not like metal on metal it's not just uh, can be damaging to the trailer but it's also not very safe because metal slides right so I asked this guy I said so how do you uh, when, when you like he has this like a vice right on a, on a forklift so he grabs that uh, bale of scrap metal and puts it down I'm gonna show you guys later because I'm just waiting for some lumber guy to show up here with my uh, timbers that I bought well not timbers but uh, plywood uh, but I asked this guy I said so do you move them like after you put them on the deck do you move them do you push them because if they just load them on the deck, that's fine. But as soon as they start moving them, that's when they uh, scratch. They can scratch the heck out of the floor. Because I know from bad experience, I already had two trailers, right? After like six months, if you're not careful, after six months, the floor looks like, you know, there's a army of piranha were having a feast in there. So, so the guy says, yeah, we push them. So he loads them, and then he pushes them, compresses them, so he can load more stuff. So. To me, that was like a big no-no signal, you know, a note. I'm not going to load on the floor. So I started calling around, use Google Maps to find, you know, like a nearby locations. I didn't find any Home Depot, but I found uh, Rona, which is uh, kind of a 
Canadian version of uh, Home Depot and I called them up and uh, they, they are selling these uh, the cheapest uh, type of uh, oh and I asked this guy can I buy like you know 4x4 four four timbers and he said oh that'll be like a pain in the butt because yeah they you know they're tall and he loads a scrap metal and he tries to push it it's gonna probably you know either fall or you know tail to something so I figured I don't need 4x4s four and actually I still don't have any timber on my trailer right because this is just this gonna be the second trip uh, so I figured I'll buy for loads like this what works is uh, you know flat board something like you know two by maybe like one inch by ten by eight um, eight feet long but you know I don't need ten of them right but for the scrap metal I need to cover basically space of maybe two for ten feet and that will be too much like what I'm gonna do with them later right and I know you know here everything is expensive so instead I figured I'll buy a cheap plywood so uh, a sheet of plywood, uh, like I think it's like this one eighth of an inch or something, basically just cheap plywood, uh, just to protect the floor. And uh, it's uh, four feet by eight feet, and each sheet is uh, thirteen bucks. So I just spent about seventy-five dollars because they also charge a dollar fifty to to cut them. And I said, yeah, I said I want five sheets, and I want them cut in uh, two feet by eight feet, you know. So I think this should work. So the guy, I'm just waiting here. The guy, uh, it's too tight in there to go with the trailer. There's all these curbs here. I don't want to damage my tires. And I'm just waiting for the guy to uh, bring the plywood. Yeah, and I definitely want to put something in here. You know, I forgot about this because once this guy starts pushing the the scrap in here, he's gonna scratch everything. You see, I, my floor, it's not all aluminum, right? I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven aluminum boards, and then the rest is, uh, you know, steel and, uh, and wood. And one thing I, I did today also, you see how dark the wood is? It's because I was researching online, you know, how to protect aluminum from damage. And what I found uh, were uh, some forums for, you know, guys that uh, have uh, trailers with wooden floor. Uh, wind and they were saying they were talking about how to protect I know my mic doesn't like the wind and they were talking I'm under the trail <laughs> and they were talking about how to protect the wooden floor of, a, of a, like a horse trailer and a couple of guys said that what works is that when they buy a new trailer like new floor every couple of years they spray uh, uh, either either diesel fuel or a mixture of uh, diesel fuel and oil and that works real great to preserve uh, the wood because it, it doesn't uh, you know it protects it from moisture and it's it doesn't crack and that's what I did I got some I got some fuel and I just use my you know spray thing like that you clean your windshield with put a little bit of diesel in there and I just sprayed it I was gonna saturate, right? And that'll preserve the wood. Because yeah, I saw all these cracks in here, you know, like I just it's the first trip and I already can see how the, the wood doesn't like she doesn't like probably you know like hot sun when you drive and it's the temperatures and the you know the temperatures during the day can be pretty high. Well not here, not in Fort McMurray, but in uh, you know like in the south where I was all right where is that guy uh, oh and then uh, this trip from Calgary so it should be okay and I almost I was looking for you know for loads out of there out of that area uh, Portland Oregon you know uh, within like 500 miles and I saw an amazing load goes all the way to Newfoundland from the western US uh, no top and it's a step deck load because actually this one the cheap uh, scrap I'm gonna hold it's a step deck load too well not the step deck no I think it's a yeah they wanted a step deck because they can load more stuff but also they wanted a three axle trailer because here in Alberta they give you uh, 24,000 kgs on a Tritum and 17,000 on the tandem and uh, uh, well, my axle is only 12,000 pounds or so 5,500 kgs. Otherwise, I could have. Didn't. I think they allow 6,500 kgs here. Uh, they started doing this recently. 
but that's what I can do 5.5 17 and 24 that's like 102,000 pounds minus the weight of my truck and trailer no permits because it's all inside Alberta you know and uh, and so uh, uh, at least this is going to be, you know, first trip where I can use the uh, special qualities of my trailer, so to speak. Because I couldn't have done it with a tandem trailer, because they want to put, like, probably 60, 65,000 pounds on me, you know. Uh, actually, maybe uh, with a flatbed, with a flatbed I'll have 17,000 on a tandem, 17 on a truck, and 5.5. .5. But still, it's like six six tons less you can load with a tandem, you know. That's like... A lot. It's twelve thousand pounds less than what I can load with this trailer. Uh, anyway, that load I found, it was going to Newfoundland, paying a whole bunch of money. Like normally, I don't go there, but this is still summer, uh, so I thought I'll, I'll give it a try. So I called the agent, and unfortunately, like I'm delivering my load on Wednesday, but these guys want that load to be picked up on Tuesday, and the distance between the place where I'm dropping off my load to this new shipper in Nevada was uh, 600 miles. So I said, you know, if you uh, give me uh, like one more day, you know, I'm unloading, let's say, Wednesday morning, then I start driving like crazy. Uh, and then Thursday, probably sometime around lunchtime, I can be there. And Thursday, that's August 1st. And the lady talked to her uh, father, this like the second time in uh, two days I run into a team of agents where the, there's the father and the daughter <laughs> so it must be lucrative business and she uh, she talks to her father oh let me talk to my dad <laughs> so it sounds like a, I don't know like a, like a, I'm back in school you know oh my dad will know just hold on and her dad shouts something from I can hear and she says well no they want they want all they're loading like there's like four loads and they want all those trucks there at the same time because there's a crane and the guy doesn't want to pay for another day of uh, because you know it's expensive it's probably like he said it, it was like six hundred or a thousand bucks uh, for another appointment you know to bring the crane over and uh, if, if they if, if they were to wait for me that means that they would pay for two days of the crane work instead of one you know and they didn't want to do that so so for now I still don't have any anything out of out of uh, Oregon so hopefully you know I, one thing I really don't want to do is I don't want to be stuck there for the weekend so that's why I'm gonna be when I drive I'm gonna deliver this one on Monday in Edmonton then I start driving to Calgary that's like you know three four hours loading Calgary and then each day I'm gonna be checking out load board to see if there's anything uh, out of Portland Oregon or within like 500 mile radius to go east. Now I'm ready for my uh, load of scrap metal. See these are cheap plywood so 2 by 8 right so I have 10 pieces here that should be enough I'll put like two in here and then space them through the trailer. So time to rock and roll. Well I'm still <laughs> sitting at the Rona here because I noticed that uh, there's a food store across the street like a big grocery you know like a supermarket and there's a Starbucks, unbelievable. So I went in and I got some food because I'm gonna start driving towards Calgary. I have no idea, you know, next time I'm gonna be eating. So just to show you what I usually prefer, you know, kind of for a healthier lifestyle. So I got some uh, blueberries, okay. This is gonna last probably, I don't know, 20 miles. Then I got some uh, walnuts. This is great food, you know, but you have to be careful with them because they have a lot of fat. So, I used to eat a whole ton of them, but then I noticed that, you know, I started having some pains, you know, because, yeah, too much fat, it's it's difficult to digest. But this is uh, lots of fiber, lots of protein, you know, um, vitamin E, which is uh, good for longevity. Then, of course, I got, I got Starbucks Tall Americano 275 here. Started chatting to the guy at the barista, and I said, "Oh, it's almost the same, even cheaper than in Ontario, Canada." And he says, "Where are you from?" I said, "Well, Cambridge, just west of Toronto." And the guy says, "Oh, I know. I'm from Toronto myself." I said, "What are you doing here? Is there a better, better life here? More opportunities?" And he said, 
Well, yeah, but you didn't seem too convinced, you know. And then I bought uh, sweet pepper. And then, then from yesterday I still have this cabbage. I love it because that's what we ate this in Russia all the time. You know, you would mince it uh, with uh, tomatoes and the onions, put some uh, sunflower oil on it. It was like a very quick salad. We, here people don't eat a raw cabbage, right? They always have this coleslaw with sour cream. We just use this, you know, with oil, like I said, right? So I, I love this. This has lots of fiber, you know, good, good for your body. I just, you know, when I'm driving, I can just take a peek. I mean, take a piece. And then my famous, my uh, favorite protein uh, drink is just eggs, raw eggs. This is made from uh, free-run egg whites, free-run uh, chickens. And has zero carbs, but has 7 grams of protein uh, per 63 grams. And this one has a half a liter, or basically over a pint. But is much more healthier than pint of beer, you know. So it's like, what is it, 7, uh, 9, uh, like 60 grams of protein here, you know. That's like two big steaks, you know. But of course you're not going to get as satisfied with this as with a steak because this digests like real fast, you know. Anyway. Oh, by the way, in case you guys are wondering why why I spent, you know, 70 bucks on on uh, on something where I'm pick, where I'm only paid like probably 400 bucks, you know, after fuel and expenses like this uh uh scrap metal, but First of all, this is business expense. It goes into my envelope where I keep all my all my receipts. See, I got an envelope right next to my seat, and then at the end of the month, I just uh, you know put them into various categories and I put them into my spreadsheet. So, and I file my you know sales tax uh, refund uh, thing, and I get the sales tax back whatever I paid on the business expenses, and. Uh, so part of that, I only probably paid like 50 bucks because that will, uh, the, the amount I paid will decrease my income tax, right? So, and I can still use it later on if it's not totally destroyed, that plywood, by the scrap metal. Uh, but also, if I don't use it and the guy starts scratching or maybe making holes in my floor, that would be much more expensive to fix than, than well, say, 50 bucks. You know what I mean? So sometimes you just have to, uh, you know, be cautious. And right now I'm really cautious because of that rub rail incident. I'm still angry about it, you know, like, how can you do this? Like, how fast were you driving? 40 miles an hour, backing into a trailer, parked behind you? Don't get me started.